Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Roy, for inviting me to speak, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Now, before we begin, I would just like to share with you what I'm going to be talking about today. The subject is catching big trends with Bollinger Bands, and I'm going to show you a technique as we look here at this older chart of LinkedIn, how where the area circled in red, you could have taken advantage, even with the uh, limited information right here shown to you on the chart, how you could have actually taken advantage to go short and reaped all the gains here to the downside. Now that's a daily chart. We can also apply the same technique to longer term charts. Here's an older chart of Amazon on a weekly time frame. With the limited information, I'm going to show you how you could have taken advantage of this setup and reaped all these benefits to the upside coming into uh, February of this year. Okay? Now this is a specific technique. It's actually a strategy. So this strategy I'm going to be sharing with you so that you will be able to implement it in its simplest form uh, as early as today. So you'll be able to look at everything and be able to know exactly where to enter, where to place your stop, as well as where to exit using the simple technique that I'm going to be sharing with you. Once again, welcome everyone. My name is Stephen Primo. I am the president and founder of Specialist Trading. Thank you for taking time out of your Saturday. Thank you for Trading Pub giving me the opportunity to speak to Raleigh and Yana for helping me set this up. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background for those of you who are new to specialist trading, we are first and foremost, I must emphasize this, an educational company. Even though we provide all of our members and students with strategies and signals for those strategies, we are more about teaching you this information so that you can ultimately empower your own trading. The reason I say this is because it's my uh, experience in my nearly 40 years of trading that the reason why most traders fail upwards of 80% is because you're relying on someone or something to tell you what to do. I mean, just look at your own trading, be a little introspective right now, and see how you make a decision. Is it because you're going to some chat room and having someone tell you what to buy or sell that day? Are you waiting for a news event to come out, and that's the only way you can determine whether you're buying or selling? Do you have tons of indicators on your screen, and when they all line up, that's the only way you can buy or sell a particular equity or future or currency pair? Now, I know this from firsthand experience because that's the way I used to trade. In fact, when I first started trading on the floor, I did all the conventional things you were supposed to do. I followed all the rules, and guess what? It didn't work at all. In fact, I went two years not even making a dime while I was on the trading floor. Even though I had access to a lot of inside information with, in terms of the actual book and order flow, it was very difficult for me to progress. And so I learned through my own mentors that were able to teach me that there's really no consistency in relying on outside sources. The only way to become consistent is to learn and have someone teach you these uh, tools or techniques that have stood the test of time, work with you to mold them to fit your needs, either aggressively, conservatively, and then basically it's up to you to trade it. You don't need to rely on someone telling you what the market's doing, on someone telling you what the best time frame is. You decide that for yourself. Once again, this is the same process I had to go through and I feel that's what sustained me for nearly 40 years. I started out trading on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange. I was on the floor for 16 years, and nine of those years I was a specialist. If you're not familiar with what a specialist was, because there aren't a, a lot around anymore, only in New York, if you ever Google those pictures of the people on the trading floor where they're yelling and screaming and there's tons of paper on the floor and they're making all these weird hand signals, the specialists were those traders that were behind those large wooden podiums that made markets in roughly about 50 stocks. So if you wanted to buy or sell a particular equity, you had to go to the trader who specialized in that. Now this is all uh, done electronically now, but uh, virtually at the time, that's where all the hand systems were because you were making the buys and sells through the specialists. That's what I did for nine years. I traded through the crash of 1987. I traded with the bear market, uh, bull market, excuse me, that followed after that. And then I left the floor in the mid to late 90s to mentor and teach and also to manage money. Uh, I, I formalized uh, specialist trading uh, with uh, ProTrader Strategies, my sister site, roughly around seven or eight years ago, and that's all we do. We teach and mentor all of our students the same tips and techniques that I've accumulated in my nearly 40 years of trading, so hopefully we can get you back on track. We've had over worldwide over 10,000 paid members. We're in all 50 states. Our, our strategies are taught and traded. Uh, in over uh, 103 countries around the world, and thir over 3,800 cities around the world, six continents. So <laughs> virtually everywhere you can think of, someone is trading, or we have taught a student of ours at Specialist Trading. And that's what we're all about. We're all about teaching you and empowering you with this information so that you can ultimately go on your own and make your own trading decisions. Once again, 
that is our philosophy and that's the reason why most traders will ultimately become consistent if they follow their own lead. I'm going to share with you this technique today so that you can start trading it as early as Monday if you like. But firstly, we are required to show you this. Uh, please take a moment to view our disclaimer. I'm going to show you a lot of performance results using this strategy with the Bollinger Bands to catch these large trends. But please remember that we can in no way guarantee that any of the results I'm about to share with you will be repeated in the future. So as you're taking a moment to view uh, the required disclaimer, I would also like to take this time to invite each and every one of you, if you haven't done so already, to follow us on Twitter. You may want to write down our handle right there. It's abbreviation for specialist trading. At SPC LST T R A D G. I post a lot of free information on a daily basis, anywhere from daily financial wisdom, little tidbits I've accumulated along the way, to actual signals that our strategies have generated. In fact, just at the very beginning of last week, I posted that a number of our strategies were generating buy signals in the market. I also posted just a few days ago, uh, for all you Forex traders, uh, that uh, one of our premier strategies generated a buy signal in the Australian dollar. And that was up uh, over 100, 150 pips in, in the first 24 hours after I tweeted that. So there's a lot of great free information if, if you follow us on Twitter, although it is rather limited. So if you would like to get more uh, detailed information about us, anywhere from videos to more, more things, you can go to Facebook. Okay, Our sister site, which is Pro Trader Strategies, has uh, put together a Facebook page. And there's a lot more detailed information about what we do, about myself and some uh, videos you can watch and they're all free and they're learning videos as well okay alright so why don't we begin I'm going to start off by sharing with you what you're going to be learning today because remember I, I told you that uh, this is a class we are an educational company the first thing I will say though is I know a lot of you have questions in my presentations if you do please wait to the very end this will, won't be long probably be included in the next 20 25 minutes and then we'll reserve the last 15 or 20 minutes for any questions you may have okay so if you have a question please wait till the very end and then I'll answer it at the very end okay all right here's what you're going to learn today in today's class we're going to talk about the common uses of Bollinger Bands Bollinger Bands are a great a great great tool we're going to share with you for those of you who don't really use them or aren't familiar with them the common uses and the way they are uh, formatted but then I'm going to share with you a proprietary setting for using the Bollinger Bands this is what we're going to use and employ in this particular strategy and this is usually reserved this proprietary setting is usually reserved only for the uh, members of the course but I'm going to give it to you in its entirety today and then we'll go into the full strategy strategy 3a okay that is the strategy that uses this proprietary technique we'll go over all the rules as well as to show you a ton of slides uh, of how this uh, works so well for capturing these big trends okay all right so let's begin with a refresher course of Bollinger Bands for those of you who aren't familiar or don't use them in your trading okay they're a very popular tool a great great tool okay we have nothing against the Bollinger Bands and we think they work perfectly and here's the way they are conventionally defined okay we'll just read the common uh, definition of them Bollinger Bands consist of a center line and this is just simply a moving average and two price channels these are the bands on top and below it okay so it's three bands all together the middle is simply a moving average and then you have a band on top and a band below it all right now when the markets become more volatile or in other words there's a lot more movement the bands widen or they move further away from the middle band or the moving average all right and during less volatile periods when there's more of a rangy market when it's a very quiet market like there is sometimes in the summer the bands will contract or they will move closer to that middle moving average now here's the common way they are applied. The tightening of the bands is often used by technical traders as an early indication that volatility is about to increase sharply. So when we see that these bands are contracting, that they're coming closer to the middle band, it's usually a sign that you're going to have a pretty large movement in whatever you're following. It can be currency pairs, it can be forks, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, futures, it can be uh, stocks. It really doesn't matter. That's how great of a tool the Bollinger Bands are. Now let's look at this standard generic picture here. As we see here, these are the common uh, uh, applications of the Bollinger Bands. And once we see that the top band is descending and the bottom one is ascending, they ha we kind of have this tightening right here towards the middle and it's followed by some very nice volatility to the upside. Now conversely, we'll also have a movement to the downside. Let me just get out my uh, pointer right here. They'll make this a lot easier to see. 
as we have a downward movement, okay, and then we have an upward movement of the lower band, we have this tightening here, and we had the same thing here, we had a downward movement and an upward movement, a tightening here, and it was followed by some nice volatility to the downside, okay? So that's the standard conventional use of Bollinger Bands. Once again, they work very well, and uh, there are lots of ways in which to find out how to apply them in this fashion. Now, at specialist trading, we want things that are a little bit more concrete. In other words, we want to know, it's great to know that there's going to be uh, you know, impending movement, possibly in the near future, but at the same time, we want to know which direction, and we want to know how high is it going to go, because that's where we'll exit, you know, or where are our exit points. This is just giving us a clue that there most likely is going to be some quick, rapid movement. So, how do we do that? Well, we apply strategy 3A. This is our premier strategy for catching these big, big trends while using our proprietary Bollinger Band setup. I'm going to give you all the rules in its entirety today for free, okay? All right, so let's talk about some of the highlights of this particular strategy. It's a continuation strategy. What does that mean? Well, we're not looking for pullbacks, for sell-offs, or, or uh, you know, in a rising market or in a down market, we're not looking for rallies to sell higher. What we're looking for is some type of indication that a trend has begun. We're looking for price to kind of stop or, or pause for a little bit, and then when we get a signal that it's continuing, we jump on board. Picture a train coming into a train station, okay? Now that's the train you want to get on, it's going in your direction. So as it comes into the train station, it's moving rather swiftly, but then it pauses to pick up some customers. It almost slows down to a complete halt. Then it starts to go back uh, up again, and that's when you jump on board. Okay, that's what we're doing with this particular strategy number 3A. How we do it is by using our unique Bollinger Band setting, which I'll reveal in just a few minutes here. Now it's designed to trade quick, powerful trends. Okay, so if you want, you can use this to get in and out rather quickly. But we're going to show you how you can stay in and try and squeeze as much of the trend as possible. Now, don't worry that, you know, you think, well, this is only for stocks, Steve. I intraday trade or I trade Forex or I trade futures. It can be applied to any market, any time frame, and in any direction. That's the beauty of this particular strategy. So whether you trade tick charts on the e-mini futures or whether you trade monthly charts of the Australian dollar, it absolutely makes no difference. You'll still see setups, okay? Now, as with all of our techniques or methods, we urge all our students to learn the strategy first. Even though you'll be able to start trading this as early as Monday, I would not recommend or suggest that because there's so much more you need to learn about this through paper trading. All right? the paper trading is a great practice so that you fully understand the process. Most of our students, when they become students of ours, their eyes light up with all of the methods and their simplicity and how consistent they are. But then the minute they start trading them, they in inevitably lose money. And they say, I don't understand it. Why am I losing money? And usually when we correspond, we find out that they're totally implementing them incorrectly. I said, you didn't study it enough. You're not paper trading. Continue to paper trade so that you fully know all of the rules. So please, even though it's going to seem as if after this presentation you know exactly how to implement it, most likely you won't and you'll uh, lose a small amount. So try to paper trade as long as you can until you fully understand it. Our edge here at Specialist Trading, we are an educational company, but our edge is consistency. We are in no way promising you the world with any of our techniques or methods. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that every trade is a winner. It's just, it's silly to even think that with any trading method or any educator or anyone in a webinar, okay? That's like saying every basketball player that shoots a, a basket, no matter where he is on the court, is going to make a basket. Or that's like saying every baseball player is going to get a hit every time it comes at the plate. It doesn't work that way. Okay, you can still have consistency by two steps forward, one step back. That's our approach. That's the way we relate to all of our techniques. So even though you may have from time to time some small minor losses with this particular technique, it's very resilient. And you're able, oftentimes we have seen in the past that oftentimes it will make back the losses rather quickly. Okay? All right, so let's go to the actual strategy. I'm going to go over the rules and then, uh, you know, we'll go over them rather quickly, but don't worry if you don't copy everything down. This is being recorded, so you can study the recording later on. And I will also share with you a ton of chart examples, so we'll go through it step by step. Oftentimes it's easier to see in the chart than it is by simply reading the rules off. All right, now here are the standard settings for the Bollinger Bands. This is when, you know, we use Bollinger Bands in the conventional way. Here are the settings, which you'll usually see on just about every charting software package. The moving average, that's the middle line, remember once again? That is always set at 20, all right? that's the default. 
and the upper band deviation and the lower band deviation are set at plus two and negative two. Now, don't ask me to go into explanation of this indicator because uh, I'm not a, 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 that skill of a technician to fully be able to explain uh, upper and lower deviation. To put it simply, that's just simply the distance they are uh, from the middle moving average, okay? So the upper band is a plus two deviation, the lower band is a negative two. So they want to be the same equidistance, just one is above and one is below. Now, when you apply this, well, there you see, that's the way the standard settings usually look. If we look at this middle line here, that's the 20 period simple moving average, that's all it is. And these are the top Bollinger Band and these are the bottom. As you can see here, when they contracted, it was met by some nice volatility to the upside, okay? So there, there is a perfect example of how it works. But we're not going to use the standard setting for Bollinger Bands in this particular technique. Here are the settings. You may want to copy these down because uh, usually when I give this presentation, this is the most common question I get at the end. Can you please repeat the settings for your uh, proprietary setting for the Bollinger Band? So you may want to write these down. We're going to keep the moving average, which is the middle uh, band, the exact same. We're not changing anything. It is still going to be there at 20. All right. The upper band is going to be changed now to plus 0.382. All right. That's a fraction, 0.382. And the lower band will simply be the same distance, but to the downside. It will be negative 0.382. Okay. That's it. That's all we're doing. I know a lot of you will say, oh, so this is some type of Fibonacci uh, example here because that's a Fibonacci um, a number. So this must be some type of Fibonacci strategy or system. No, it's just this was a number I was taught nearly 40 years ago on the floor. Uh, at the time, I didn't even know what Fibonacci uh, levels and retracements were. It has nothing to do with that. Uh, it's just a, 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 a great uh, upper and lower setting that has worked great for this technique. Now, if you want to alter and, and switch them a little bit, you know, or maybe go to 0 0.50 or whatever you'd like, that's fine but we have found the best consistency with these settings, okay? So remember, once again, the middle line, which is simply a moving average, a simple moving average, is gonna stay at 20, so there's nothing you have to change. We're just gonna change the upper and lower band deviations to plus 0.382 and negative 0.382. Now, if you have trouble with that, uh, contact the tech support at your charting software. They should be able to uh, edit it for you or show you how to do that. If they're not able to, there are a number of free websites. I believe freestockcharts.com gives you the ability to do that. There's a lot of ways to do it uh, with free sites on the internet. So just do a, a search for that, okay? All right, so let's look now and see what it'll look like. This is an uh, older chart of Facebook with the standard setting. This is the standard settings here, okay? So what does this look like when we alter them to our proprietary settings? Well, it'll look like this. Do you see how we've now smoothed it out? I know a lot of people say they look like, uh, you know, envelopes, but it's not an envelope. It's much more of a smoothing uh, trend factor, which helps us. We're not going to just use this to find the trend. We're also using this to apply our entries and our exit points. All right, so once you are able to uh, edit the uh, Bollinger Bands, you should have something that looks like this, more of like a smooth kind of flowing uh, river there, three bands. Okay, let's go through the rules step by step. Once again, don't worry if you don't get all these down or write them down perfectly or get them to their exact uh, you know, uh, application because this is being recorded. And I'm going to show you a lot of slides after this so you should be able to absorb it later on. All right, step number one. Now, by the way, these are all for buy setups. Uh, you'll simply just reverse these rules to go short, but it's very simple, okay? Step number one. We want to see five consecutive bars close either on or above. It's much better if it's above, but on would be okay. The highest Bollinger Band, okay? So here's what ch that should look like. If we see this older chart of the E-mini, we see here that we have the setting. That's the way the Bollinger Bands would look, okay? And price is kind of oscillating above and below. But now we have a total of five bars that close above. We want to see five consecutive closes, okay? Now, obviously, if we're going short, we want to see five closes below. All right, that's step number one. Step number two, now we want to look for a short-term pivot high to be created above the highest Bollinger Band. All right, now that's simply just a three-bar pattern where you have a bar that makes a high, the next bar makes a higher high, and the next bar makes a lower high. Or if we look at this example, it'll look like this. So this is what we're looking for. Bar number one makes a high. 
bar number two makes a higher high and bar number three makes a lower high. So we kind of have this kind of an arrowhead approach here. All right. So that's what we're looking for next. So we have the five bars that close above the highest Bollinger Band. And then we see here that we have within those five bars, we have that one, two, three bar pattern. Okay. Now, here's the one thing where students get confused. They think, well, Steve, does this short-term pivot high have to be created within those five, those first five bars that close above? No, absolutely not. And I'll show you a few examples of that in just a few moments. In other words, we could have five closes close above that highest Bollinger Band, and they could be just simply, you know, each one making higher highs. And then we'd have to wait for a short-term pivot or something like this to appear. All right. Or we could have it within. Either way, though, this should be a short-term high. That's what we're looking for. Okay? Let's go to step number three. We're going to enter the buy when price now trades one tick above that short-term high. Now, you notice here I say when it trades, not when it closes. So we do not need to close above that short-term high. We only need to trade one tick above. So this is going to be intra-bar. So if you're looking at daily bars, sometime within the day it needs to trade above there, that's your signal to enter. You can either you know, uh, just jump on board, you can have some type of limit in there, whatever you want to do, but that's when you should be going long. All right? You do not have to wait for a close above that short-term high. So if we look here, there's the short-term high. And so what we want to do is we want to enter once price trades above it. So if we go forward here, we see that, well, that's when price went above it, and that's our entry right here, okay? Now here's one more thing that we suggest and that we, we use, especially for our beginning traders of this. We want to see, prior to entering, we want to see that all the bars remain above or at least close on or above this highest Bollinger Band because this is telling us, once again, that we are in the midst of some type of upward trend. Remember, this is a continuation strategy. Now, if we had created you know, the first five bars above, and then we created the short-term top, and then price started to sell off like we did, and then we closed a couple of times below here, well, that would tell me most likely that we've run out of gas, and this really isn't a trend yet. Now, sometimes it'll work, and sometimes it'll go back up, but oftentimes we've seen that if we close below that highest Bollinger Band, we're most likely going to go lower. And so we don't want to, or it's going to be kind of a choppy market, so we don't want to enter if price dips below this highest Bollinger Band. So a common rule is, is once we have these first two steps, stay above the highest Bollinger Band. Obviously, if we're going short, we want to stay below the, uh, the lowest Bollinger Band. Now remember, this is just a suggestion. It's not a, a straight-out rule, but it's, a, it's a, a suggestion, especially in the beginning. You'll get some better setups while you're learning. All right, so we've just entered into this trade, but we need to know where we're going to protect our trade. All right, we, we're in the trade. What if it doesn't work? Because once again, they don't all work, but you know, it has a high level of consistency, but you still always have to protect yourself. So where do we place our stop? Well, step number four, we're going to place our protective stop just below the lowest short-term low that was created prior to entry. So remember we gave you the rules for the short-term top? Well, the short-term pivot low is the exact opposite. In other words, we create a low, this second bar creates a lower low, and this third bar creates a higher low. So now we have kind of this V type of look here in this three-bar pattern, okay? So we want to find where that was created prior to entry. So if we entered here, where is the short-term low? All right, that's what you have to ask yourself, and obviously it's right here, okay? We have bar number one makes a low, bar number two makes a lower low, bar number three makes a, a, a higher low. So that's our stop placement. So we are simply going to place our stop right there. Okay, so we know where we've entered. We know where we place our stop. Now here comes the last step. Where do we exit? Now this is where mostly we're, our beginning students have difficulty with because they've never heard of this concept before. But I'm going to explain it to you in its entirety and it's actually very simple. This is called a range extension exit, and here's how it works. Step number five is we're going to sell or exit on a range extension of either 200 and or 300 percent. Okay, so we have to ask ourselves, what, what does that mean? <laughs> okay, don't worry, it's very simple. Remember when we first picked up the short-term top, that was where we were going to buy one tick above, it was right here. Okay, well since we're long, that's the top of the range. All right, the high of that bar is the top of the range. Now, 
we have to ask ourselves, where did that rally start? Well, the rally started down here, right? Here's where the rally started. So this is a range from here to here, all right? So all we do is we measure that range. That's 100%. We measure the range from top to bottom, from the very top of where that pivot was that you first uh, realized I'm going to be buying one tick above to where the rally started, okay? And that's where you measure 100% range. So, so however many points that is, if you're looking at an intraday chart, it could be a couple of points. If you're looking at a chart like this, it could be 10 points, whatever it is, but that's 100%, okay? Now, however amount of points that is, you simply add that on top, and that gives you 200%, and that's your first exit point. You can decide to exit there. Remember, we're putting the power in your hands. It's up to you. Or you can decide to exit at 300. Now, as you exited at 300 on the simple five-minute chart, that's 17 points or $850 per contract in the E-mini. Now, this is how simple it is. We had, didn't have to look at a ton of indicators. In fact, we only looked at one. We didn't have to look at any news. We didn't have to go to any chat room or trading room and have someone tell us where to buy or where to sell, what the perfect time frame is. What did we do? We gave you the information and then you empowered yourself with it and decided, you know what? I'm going to exit here. I'm going to end it here. I'm going to place my stop placement. I'm following the rules that I've learned. Maybe I can edit them a little bit. Maybe I can move my stop up if I like. Maybe I'm going to sell half my position at 200, the other portion at 300. Maybe I'll sell everything at 200. Or maybe I'll wait and sell everything at 300. You see how it's up to you. This, in our opinion, is the only way traders become consistent not by relying on someone to tell them enter here exit here trade this time frame it just doesn't work trust me i've been trading for nearly four decades if it works so well ask yourself how are you doing how, how's it working for you it didn't work for me trust me I, I did that for two years i was on the trading floor and i had every news subscription for every uh market letter i waited with bated breath on every earnings announcement to tell me what to do on every uh, jobless claim report that came out every economic indicator I listened to every guru, I was following all the different types of techniques and strategies and nothing worked in terms of consistency. It wasn't until my mentors took me aside, gave me this information that it stood the test of time and then said, listen, you know, we'll help you mold it, but you've got to make your own decisions. That's the only way you'll become consistent in the market. And because of that, I feel that type of training and that type of philosophy has been what sustained me for nearly 40 years. So this is what we teach all of our students. All right, so that in itself, in a nutshell, is strategy 3A. Let's look at some more examples so you can get a better understanding and see how it works in different markets and different environments. So let's start out with stocks for all you stock traders there, just to show you that it works in every market, every environment, every direction. All right, remember we started off with LinkedIn. Now, how could we have gotten advantage, taken advantage of getting short right here? How would we have known that the stock was going to fall out of bed? Obviously, some news came out here, and the stock gapped down tremendously. How in the world would we have known to gone short? Well, it's simple. Remember, we put the power in our hands. The first thing we do is apply our Bollinger Band setting, okay? Now, at this point right here, last December, we see that the market, we started to have consecutive closes below the lowest Bollinger Band. So... We count a total of five consecutive closes below, okay? Now, after that, we want to look for a short-term low. Now, there is no short-term low within those five, but we had to wait, and a few bars later, here was a short-term low, okay? Here's the pause. That is simply is the pause before we continue going lower. Now, we're not going to simply buy at the market. We have to wait for price to trade just below that short-term low. It doesn't have to close there. All it has to do is trade one tick below and we sell at the market and we realize this is an expensive $200, $300 stock. Not everyone can short that. So what we do is we can apply options if you want. Uh, you know, if it's expensive stock, you don't like to short, simply buy some directional puts or use a, a, a shorting strategy with the options. Many of our uh, students don't actually trade stocks. They just, whenever we get a setup or a signal, they apply options to them. So you could have, uh, you know, bought puts if you like. And that was your entry point right here at 226 roughly, okay? Then we go back and see when was the last short-term high created. It was right there where the stop placement is. So there's our stop, all right? And then the last thing we want to do is measure where we're going to have the range, okay? So in other words, we measure where the bottom was. Here's where that short-term low. And our sell-off started way up here. So that's the range, all right? Our range is simply 100% right there. That's where the sell-off started, and that was the short-term low before we entered. 
So that's 100%. If we want to exit at 200%, we simply subtract however amount of points that is, and we could have exited right there. If we ultimately wanted to exit at 300%, we could have placed a limit, and we would have lucked out because that's where the gap opening came down, obviously on some news. And guess what? If you chose 300% to exit, well, that's a nice 100 points in your favor in just about two months. See how we didn't have to look at any news. We didn't have to look at a ton of indicators. Everything you need to know is right in front of you. Trading is really simple. It's just us ourselves that make it more complicated than it has to be. So try to stick with things that have a high level of consistency and then learn how to follow the rules and you'll get on that road to successful consistent trading. Remember we showed you the weekly chart of Amazon, okay? Well, here's an example where you can try and squeeze out as much profit as possible. How would we have known at this point to go long? Obviously, we didn't know it was going to continue. This could have been a very high topping formation. We could have rolled over. So how did we know to uh, initiate some type of long setup? Well, we add the proprietary Bollinger Band setting, and now we see it's easy because where is price in relation to that Bollinger Band? Price is above, and we have five consecutive closes telling us that we are in a short-term uptrend. So now we look for the pause or the short-term high, which is right there. Okay, And if price does not trade back below those Bollinger Bands, we're going to enter right here if it trades above. And obviously we did. We never went below those Bollinger Bands. So we entered at 389. Once again, a very expensive stock, but you could have, this is a weekly chart, you could have purchased leaps if you wanted to. Uh, and we placed our stop just below that uh, short-term low. The last thing we need to do is just measure the range. That was at the very top right here of where we entered one tick above. And where did that rally start? The rally started down here. So that defines our range rather easily. That's 100%. So if we want to exit at 200, we can do that. We could exit at 300. Now here's one thing I want to say. This is more advanced. But we always caution our members when they're using this strategy to either exit at 300. And if you want to go one step further, you can go to 400 but never be in the trade longer than 400%, all right? And especially when you're beginning, we would often suggest getting out at 200 and 300 at the very extreme. Only after you uh, practice and traded this for a while would we suggest, if you really had a strong feeling that there was a ton of volatility and strength to the upside, could you stay for 400? Now, had you been so inclined, you could have applied that here. You could have exited partially at 200, partially at 300, and gone for the gold at 400. And that's 300 points in your favor in just, you know, about a year or so, okay? No need to research the company and look at earnings. Remember, most traders take their cue for making decisions from an outside source. That can either be earnings, uh, you know, uh, 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 applications or earnings projections. It can be what some guy is talking about uh, on a, uh, a trading room telling you what he thinks long term of the stock or what some guy is saying on TV. I've been trading for nearly 40 years. I stopped looking at those things over 30 years ago. So why have I been able to continue trading? I think what the reason why is because I don't listen to those things. The, the simpler you make your trading, the easier it will be to become consistent. All right, let's look at something more down to earth, okay? Those were very expensive stocks, uh, different time frames. Let's look at DUK coming into uh, March here. As we see at this point, we had five closes above the Bollinger Band. Oh, actually, no, we only had three closes. Here's an example of how people uh, actually uh, make mistakes. And this is why we say to paper trade. Now, right here, someone could say, well, Steve, here's a short-term top. But remember, in the beginning, if we trade below, we don't want to take these trades. Now, even though we still went higher, oftentimes, if we trade below, it'll be a whipsaw type of trade. And you'll go back and forth, and you'll get whipsawed out. So we would suggest, while you're starting, not to take that. Wait for five consecutive closes. As you can see, we only have three consecutive closes, so that's not a valid setup. So we decline, and it's only with only three closes, we're not interested in that. And we wait for just a week or so longer, and there are five consecutive closes above. So now we can define the short-term pivot high, which is right here. And we simply enter right above at 71.03. We place our stop and then measure the range. Now that we have 100% range where the rally uh, began or where the first short-term top was, we simply add 200 and 300, and coming into the end of February, that was eight points in our favor, okay? Now, one way to trade this, a lot of people say, well, Steve, my stop is here. Once we get to 200, 
Uh, what they tell me is they say, well, Steve, I can usually get out here at partial my position and then move my stop to unchanged. Sure, that's fine. Or they say, I'll get out at 300 and then uh, you know, I'll wait maybe for 400 and I'll move my stop up to here. It's up to you. I personally like to get out of everything at 200%. That's just the way I like to trade. The, my, tra my training on the floor was you know, many times I held a trade for maybe 30 seconds. So I like to get out rather quickly. Here's the beauty of it. There's no right or wrong way to trade it. If you want to stay in as long as possible, it's up to you. But we would suggest no longer than the 400. Now, uh, remember, we, we told you where to enter. We told you how to place your stop. We told you how to find the exit point. So all the rules are all here already in front of you. Now, as we see here, there's the 300 uh, range right here at this top. And isn't it uncanny how many times we will stop the trend. So that's why we say, especially in the beginning, we would say exit at 300. If you get a little bit more skilled, 400, but that's up to you. Let's look at WYN. As we look here, we see once we drop below the, the uh, Bollinger Bands, we have five consecutive closes. Okay, so that meets the first step requirement. And here is the short-term low. So that meets the second step. All right, now we know we can only enter if we trade below that, which we did at 73.71. Okay, so we measure the range extension where we began to sell off and where that short-term low was. Here's 100%, and in this case, we only went 200%, which uh, gave us a, a total profit of nine uh, points, a little over nine and a quarter points, and then we started to firm back up. So in this case, it would have been right to get out at the 200% range extension because you see, we started to get closes above. Now, at the time I took this slide, it was the first week in March, and we had already started to see a movement to the upside. As you can see here, you would have switched gears and instantly gone long once you had five closes above, you have short-term high, so now you would have said, okay, now I'm looking at this from the long side. I don't care what people are talking about this particular stock. I don't care what people are saying for uh, what the market's gonna do. I'm only looking at the chart in front of me. That tells me everything I need to know, all right? Keep things simple. Don't overcomplicate by looking at different time frames, saying, well, Steve, uh, what was the weekly chart of WYN doing? We don't care, all right? Only trade the chart you're looking at. Keep it simple. So, as you can see here, you would have entered at 69.65, place your stop just below the recent short-term low, measure the range, okay? And here's 200% at 78.60. Now, I, in your uh, uh, off time, either when we conclude this or if you're lucky enough to be in front of a computer right now, you'll be able to see that we are actually much higher than we were when I took this slide. So in fact, you can go check out and see if we would have exited WYN here for roughly another nice nine or 10 points to the upside. I think you'll be very surprised and pleasantly surprised when you see that this trade actually did pay off. All right, now a lot of people say, well, Steve, I'm sorry, but I've always been taught you have to trade with the news. I mean, the news, always works in your favor, it always comes out in advance. Well, listen, if you have to, if you can't you know, cut the umbilical cord, we never tell anyone how to trade. We just give them information that has stood the test of time. It's not suggested and in no way recommended that any of our members have to listen to the news. It's just not required. But let's look at something that has been in the news. This is Chipotle. Everyone knows the stock has really just been doing terribly. In fact, this was from October. So this is going back four or five months, maybe six months actually, uh, in the past. Chipotle shares tumble 7% on disappointing earnings. This is on top of all the uh, scares, you know, the, uh, with the uh, disease scares and everything involved with the viruses. On top of that, the earnings are terrible. So this is really some bad information, okay? Now, let's look at the stock. As we were kind of oscillating above and below the proprietary setting of the Bollinger Bands, here's where that news came out. Now, I know a lot of people like to be contrarians. They like to say, well, Steve, look at what we did here. We gapped down. That was on some strong volume. I like to look at volume. I love volume, okay? So I've always been taught volume tells you that it's on stock volume. So, so all the sellers got out. This is probably a great buying opportunity. If anything, we're gonna come back and we're gonna fill that gap. And who knows, maybe that was the bottom. Maybe we're going back up because we've been going down for a long time. Once again, over complicating your trading. Don't overthink all these things. We don't require anyone to look at volume either. It's another indicator we don't even follow, okay? Because I found no consistency in it. It's too subjective. Just keep things simple. And what do we have here? We have right at this point, five closes below. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And we have a short-term bottom created. 
So that's our setup. That's the only thing we're interested in. We don't care about the news. We do not care about the volume. We don't care about the earnings. All we're caring about is what the market is telling us because that's what we want to take our cue from, the market, not from anything else. And the market is telling us that, hey, it uh, looks like I'm going much lower and I've paused here before I go lower. Why don't you come on board? Okay, we'll buy, I'm sorry, we'll sell or we'll buy puts once we trade below and that was at 645. Now once again, we realize too expensive for anyone to short so you could just simply short uh, Chipotle by buying puts or doing some type of negative uh, option strategy. We measure the range extension and we simply subtract for 200 and or 300 points. So roughly in the time of just a couple of months, that's over 200 points in your favor. Don't you think you would have liked to have been uh, long the puts in Chipotle? Even when someone was trying to overemphasize and saying, well, you know, uh, the volume was really strong. It looks like a blowout to the downside. We should buy this and try to take quick advantage of a nice pop back up to fill that gap. Once again, there's no consistency in that. Just stick and listen to what the market is trying to tell you. Now, a lot of people say, well, Steve, I don't trade stocks, I trade commodities. Okay, well, I don't trade commodities. I did in the past, but I don't currently trade them. Uh, here's a chart in soybeans, okay? Nothing has changed. We didn't alter anything because we're looking at a commodity now, but here's a daily chart in soybeans. What do we have? We have the same plotting of the Bollinger Bands, the same uh, settings. We have five consecutive closes above, the same first step rule. We have a short-term top identified. So all we have to do is purchase once we enter above. We went from 974 to 1039 in just roughly about a week. Okay. And crude oil. Here's a chart of crude oil coming into March. Okay. The only people I know that have lost money in crude oil are the people trying to pick bottoms. If we are below that uh, Bollinger Band setting, we're only looking to go short. Now I believe now we've had a nice little run up in crude oil, so now we're looking to go long. That's fine. All we do is we just reverse, but we can't do it until the market tells us, not until some trading guru on TV tells us that uh, crude oil has bottomed out. Because uh, trust me, there have been people calling for uh, crude oil bottoming out at all these levels, and none of them held. Okay, so why not just listen to the market instead of somebody who really, really has no idea uh, whether it's going to stop or not. Now at this point we see here we had five consecutive closes and we created a short term bottom. This was in uh, November. Okay, So that's our clue that we have paused on the downside and most likely we're going to be going lower. So we would have entered right here at 52.28, find where the first short term top is right here. All right, That's our stop and here's the 200% range extension and here's the 300. Now as I stated, where do you want to get out of your trade, usually at 300. If you're really aggressive, you can maybe go to 400, but we'd always suggest 300 is where you should end and exit. Now, if you notice here, this was coming into March. I believe we are much higher now. So it's almost uncanny how 300 and or 400% is the bottom of some type of trend. All right, let's go to the E-mini S&P. We're going to pick some different time frames because we know that most people trade the E-mini S&P on a different time frame. I'm going to start out with a 60-minute chart, all right? And we see here that we have a short-term top that was created, but you see we kind of closed a little below there, so we're not going to take that one. Remember, we want to start out being very conservative. So let's take this one because all the bars are above that top Bollinger Band. Now, even though we intra-bar go below it, all the closes are above it. You see this bar right here closed below, so we don't want to take a chance. We just want to make sure that we are still above, okay? And all of these closed above. So we're going to take this one. This is our short-term high. Our entry is just above that short-term high, 1847.75. We place our stop just below the nearest short-term low. Here's where the rally started, and here's the 200%. Now, as you can see, if you would have entered that on an hourly basis, that's 42 points in just about one day, okay? That's $2,100 per contract. That's simple. We don't care about outside stuff telling us what the market's going to do. Everything you need to know is usually right in front of you. How about a 10-minute chart, okay, for all you day traders out there, okay? Here's a 10-minute chart of the E-mini going back to the end of February. We have our five closes below at the very beginning of the day and we have our short-term bottom created. So that's a valid setup and you would have entered short once we traded below that at 3150. You measure, okay, the range, here's 200 and if you were lucky enough 
to hold 300 and hold overnight, you would have had a nice gap opening the next day and concluded the trade for a nice 31 points or roughly almost $1,600 per contract, okay? Now, this is where we tell you to be out of the trade because this is more like 400% range right now and that's a good thing because guess what? Look what the trend did. On a 10 minute time frame, we switched back up above and now we are closing above the proprietary setting. So this is telling us we have an uptrend in place. Where's the pause? The pause is right here where that short term top is created. So we are going to enter once we trade one tick above. We don't have to close above, we just have to trade there. And there's our entry at 19.10. Our stop is just below at the nearest short term low. Here's where the rally started. And we just simply double it. And the very next day we make 20 points or $1,000 per contract. Once again, you see how simple trading is. The only reason trading is difficult is because we make it more difficult than it has to be. Trading is extremely simple when you learn how to uh, release all of the what my mentors called noise. When I used to talk about earnings reports and when I used to tell them about volume, I used to talk about all these different indicators, they used to say, Steve, that's just noise. And don't, don't focus on that stuff. How about a five minute chart of the E-mini? Okay, this was the first of March, so just going back a couple of weeks. All right, the first of March, we opened up above the proprietary setting, okay? And we created our short term top. We have five closes right there, but here's our short term top right here, okay? The reason why this isn't the short term top because the prior bar is below, okay? So, that's our short term top. That's our entry, 1949.75. This was just two or three weeks ago. We place our stop just below the nearest short term low. And then we measure the range. Here's 100 and 200. So if you're day trading, as we are on this five minute chart, you could have entered here, placed your order to, for your stop, and then exited everything at 72 and a half. That's the 200% range extension. And once again, this is the way I usually like to trade on intraday trading. I just place the order in there and I'm out usually at 200%. So this was on a five minute chart and look what happened at the very end of the day. That's 22 points, nearly 23 points or over $1,100 per contract just following this simple strategy. And then lastly, let's look at another five minute chart which was last week or so, I believe the week before last on the 10th. We had five consecutive closes below the uh, Bollinger Band setting. This was on the 10th, I believe, yes. And then all we did was figure out where the uh, entry would be at 85.25. We measure the range and then we subtract it. And at 200%, you could have exited for a nice 17 and a half points. Now, if you were going for 300%, we would have suggested moving your stop for your balance down here to unchanged. But look what happened. Later on towards the end of the day, we started to flirt with being on the upside. And so at this point, we actually did create an uptrend. So now we want to be long. So we don't want to be short anymore and you simply look for that nearest short term high and that's your entry point. So you would have stopped and reversed, cover your short up here, maybe down here at 1980 50, measure the range and exit at the end of the day for another nine points. So we're talking roughly about 26, uh, 27 points or roughly $1,300 per contract on a five minute time frame and this was just a week or so ago. Now lastly, let's look at the Forex markets. Now I'm going to show you an, a larger time frame for the Forex markets because we know a lot of people like to use them for, uh, for longer time spans, but trust me, you can apply this technique I just shared with you, whether you are trading tick charts, whether you're trading one minute bars, whether you're trading weekly bars, whether you are trading monthly bars. It does not matter. And it does not matter whether you're trading the Forex, the futures, or stocks. So just because you see one time frame in a specific market I'm, I'm sharing with you right now, it doesn't mean that that's the only one it works with. It doesn't matter. We have students trading this tick bars in the Forex markets, okay? Here's a weekly chart of the Australian dollar, okay? This is going back to September and October of 2014. This is how long ago this was, and this is how well this can, technique can work in any market and any time frame. Now, the Australian dollar has had a long history of going lower and lower. Everybody has their two cents in as to why the Australian dollar has been going lower. We don't care about that. Once again, all that serves is to overcomplicate and have you second guess your strategy. All we care about is that we had five consecutive closes on weekly bars below the lowest Bollinger Band. So this is telling us a trend is in place. Where's the pause? 
right here. This is where we have the nearest short-term low. So this is telling us that we can enter to go short. Now someone could say, but Steve, don't you want to hear what the economic news is, what's going on worldly, what's happening with the Australian dollar versus the dollar? No, we don't care about any of that stuff because the market is telling us what it's most likely going to do. So we just want to know we're going to short the Australian dollar on a weekly basis if it trades below that. And as you can see, on the very next week, it did. So we would have been short at 86.41. Here's our stop just below the nearest short-term high, as we explained in the very beginning. We measure the range where the sell-off started and where we uh, had our short-term low. So that's 100. And now all we have to do is measure 200 and 300. And these are our exit points. You can either cover your short at 200 or cover your short at 300 or whatever you'd like. And so we all know what's happened coming into October, November of last year, okay? That's 1500 uh, point, $15,000 per contract shorting. Once again, very simple. This is the same rules I taught you, showing you how to apply this to a five-minute chart of E-mini, the same rules I share with you, showing you how to apply to a daily chart of stock. Nothing changes. All right, let's recap before we go to your questions and answer period. Highlights, this is a continuation strategy. Remember, we're looking for a trend to start, and then we're looking for it to pause. That's our cue to get in. The way we discover this is by our unique Bollinger Band setting. This is designed to trade quick, powerful trends, as you just saw. It works in any market, any time frame, in any direction. But please, learn this strategy. And the way to learn it is by paper trading. I'm sure that Trading Pub is recording this, so please watch the recording as often as you'd like. Paper trade this, though in the beginning because most of the mistakes will come from not studying enough. Our edge here is consistency. You will have small losses from time to time, but you see how valid this is and how well it can work. And through your paper trading, you'll see how valid it is as well. Plus, you're getting it for free, okay? So if you're not happy with it, guess what? You don't have to spend anything. It's yours now. You have something that most of our members have spent and paid good money for. Now, in closing, I want you to ask yourself, and ask yourself honestly, do you think any of these edges could have helped your trading this past year. If you're struggling the way so many traders are in the first quarter of the year already, how would you like to have maybe two, three, maybe five more edges such as the one I just shared with you? Completely different, but ways in which to increase your odds for success. I just want to take a few moments to talk about what we're offering today. This is today's special uh, for the attendees. It's our discount for all the attendees today for taking time out of your Saturday. This is our Secrets of a Stock Exchange Specialist training sessions. Now, three years ago, I was asked to be the head speaker at a uh, seminar in Colorado, in Denver, Colorado. I spoke in front of hundreds of people where I gave many more high probability trading edges, totally different from the one I just shared with you today. And included with that, I gave all the rules to one of our best pullback strategies. That's uh, strategy number one. Okay, This is all included in our Secrets of a Stock Exchange video seminar. Now, let me show you some of the recent signals that were generated. These are pullbacks. These are entirely different from what I share with you in today's strategy because the way strategy number one works is that it gets you buying in at very inexpensive prices. Why? Because you're buying within a uptrend, but you're buying on the pullback. So as you can see here, where many people were thinking Facebook was falling out of bed in October, the strategy generated a buy signal because it was telling you that it was simply resting or pulling back before it went higher. So this was an actual strategy number one signal to go long. It works on the downside as well. As WIM was making new highs there, the strategy generated a sell signal saying it was just a pullback to the upside and look what happened to the stock. So it's entirely different from what I share with you today where this is not a continuation strategy. This is a pullback strategy that gets you in at very inexpensive prices. Now, the same rules, once again, can be applied to stocks as well as E-mini futures. Here's a pullback on a five-minute chart of the E-mini to the upside. And here's a sell on a daily chart of the E-mini to the downside. Okay? Same rules apply if we look at weekly charts of the Canadian dollar. Canadian dollar was falling out of bed last spring. A lot of people thought it was going lower. And we generated a buy signal, or strategy number one generated a buy signal to go long. So this is a great, great, it's probably our most consistent pullback strategy. This is included. Now the course usually goes for close to $1,000, but because of our association with Trading Pub today, we're offering you all this information, the free strategy, all the different, uh, different high probability trading edges, 
and including lifetime correspondence with me for only $37. This is a really, really great deal. It's an online video course. You don't have to wait for anything to be shipped to you. It's right there. Uh, we just uh, send you uh, the link and you can watch it at your own leisure. It's three hours of intensive, powerful information that I've accumulated in nearly 40 years. Included in that are all the complete rules, entries, stop placement, exit points, aggressive conservative trading to one of our best pullback strategies, that's strategy number one. And I think the best part about this is that you get nearly 40 years of experience as your mentor. You have lifetime correspondence with me. So for $37, you're getting all this included. It usually runs for close to 1000 Now, here's the good news. It is discounted to only $37, but that's for a limited time only. So uh, if you're thinking about taking advantage of this, I believe you only have uh, till the end of the weekend until it goes right back up to close to $1,000. Okay? So here's how to take advantage of this great, great offer. Contact my sister site, which is Pro Trader Strategies. You can either email them there at their email address or call them directly. Or if you want to just take advantage of the $37 uh, link automatically, you can go to that link at the very bottom. I don't believe that is a live link. I believe you have to copy and paste that. But Raleigh has just posted the live link under the general chat uh, box. So you can click that on and it will automatically take you to the $37 sign-up page, okay? And that's all you're uh, you know, uh, required to do. You're not in any way required to purchase anything else if you don't want to. So $37 for all this great information. I want to thank you so much for, for uh, sticking through the whole presentation before asking any questions. And if uh, you'll give us just a few, <clears throat> excuse me, a few minutes here, I think we're always going to uh, read off some of uh, the best questions that you submitted. <laughs> Okay, Steve. Well, once again, thank you for a fantastic presentation, and you've done such a thorough job, uh, you know, explaining what was going on. Many of the questions that uh, have come up during the session were actually answered by some of the folks that are here in the room, as well as mine, but uh, as well as myself. But there were some. There were one question that uh, Cliff asked, which I thought was kind of interesting. He says, "Hey, I came a little bit late, but uh, you know, I, I think he's probably a binary options trader, and he was wondering, can this be used?" for trading binary options uh, sure you know Cliff I, I personally don't trade binary options but I see no reason why it couldn't be uh, you know uh, once again all we are basically looking at is market behavior and the market behavior tells us that once let's say you're uh, you know trading intraday with binary options once you see that uh, you know you have a trend in place through the proprietary rules and the settings of the Bollinger Bands uh, it's very simple to just jump on board and, uh, you know, uh, I would say paper trade it with binary options, but I know that we have many students that do trade binary options, and I'm sure many of them trade the same strategy, so we haven't had any complaints yet. All right. Um, lots of questions, once again, about the variety of markets that can be traded, traded, and I think, Steve, you did a great job with that as well. But I think suffice it to say, I mean, I don't want to overgeneralize here, but it sounds to me like this strategy can be applied in any market. Is there a market that you're aware of where it doesn't work, Stephen? No, well, I, I, it's it's really amazing. I, I we, we have students that trade this only on the forex markets. We have students that trade this only for stocks. We have students that trade this just intraday uh, futures, stocks, forex, current space. It doesn't matter. What really matters is what I have found out uh, in trading all these years is that you have to uh, be in sync more with your trading persona. So, in other words, if you aren't an intraday trader, if you like to hold positions overnight or a more swing, then use this for daily bars, whatever market you decide, okay? If you like to get in and out of action quickly the way I was trained and the way I like to trade, then apply this to intraday trading of stocks, intraday trading of forex, intraday trading of futures. It doesn't matter. You can try this on a one-minute chart, uh, a tick chart, or a five-minute. It doesn't matter, but uh, the only thing I found out, you will get many more signals, obviously, when you go to a smaller time frame because there's many more bars that are created. But uh, the main thing we want to stress is trade in sync with your particular style. So if you're a swing trader, if you're an investor, you know, I don't care how good of setups you see on an intraday basis, you probably won't make money because you're trading out of, your, out of your element. You don't feel comfortable, you know, making decisions every couple of minutes. But if you like to be in and out quickly, then trade this on a tick chart. It's okay. 
Yeah, good point. So then the other question that was just asked multiple times, and I thought that you did a good job of it also in your examples, was also not only just the variety of markets that it can be applied on, but as far as, you know, a time frames. And I think you mentioned and you showed daily, weekly, hourly, 10 minute, five minute bars. What, what about range bars, uh, Stephen? Any, any experience using this with range bars? Sure, it'll work with rain bars just as well. The only thing is I have noticed that with range bars, unless you're looking at a very small range, it may take a while for the uh, setups to occur because, uh, as you know, range bars have nothing to do with time. So they're, you know, they're going to be completed when a specific range that you have uh, predetermined is right. completed on the bar. So many times if you don't, you may have a setup on, let's say, a one-minute chart or a tick chart, but if you're looking at a one-bar range or a two-point uh, range, you won't have a setup completed yet because you're waiting for that bar to conclude. So uh, this is all found out through experimentation, though. I particularly like to use this on minute bars myself, uh, but it, there's no right or wrong way to trade it. That's why, you know, uh, we always say the only way to become consistent, uh, in our opinion, is to make your own trading decisions. And it would be going entirely against our philosophy if I said, hey, everyone, this is the best time frame and this is the best market to trade because I, I don't believe in that. Everyone, we have students that swear by it on currency pairs. We have other students that swear by it intraday trading of stocks. So who's to say which is better than the other? It's that it, the only difference is that they are trading in sync with their own personal parameters. And that's the key to success, making your own decisions uh, what works best for you. Sure. And, and you know, Stephen, it's interesting because there's a question here. Kanala is saying, does this strategy always work or are there time when it fails? And I'm I'm sure I know the answer to that question. But uh, is that it's, you know, it's impossible for something to be 100 percent correct. But let me ask you this. In the application, when you work with your students on that, is there any discretion associated with this? Or are you basically saying, look, this is a rule tested for yourself and and, and experience for yourself what the uh, the, the winning uh, percentage are? That's a great question. We always teach and trade strategies. We do not teach or trade systems because systems are rule-based just like strategies but the difference is a system is rule-based but you must follow the rules like a robot down right down the steps one two three four five the same exact way each and every time regardless of the uh, market environment regardless of the market everything must be traded the exact same way there is no room for allowing you to be a part of the process. Now, uh, the difference with strategies that, is that they are also rule-based, but they're roughly anywhere from 60 to 70% rule-based, and we we'll always allow you know, roughly 30% room for discretion. Now, here's where the only difference comes in. When we say discretion, for some reason discretion has come to mean, uh, well, I woke up this morning and I feel really lucky today, so I'm going to bet the farm and uh, I got a really good feeling the market's going up. Or uh, discretion is, gosh, I'm really scared. I, I had a loser that last one, and I, I'm not going to take it because I'm just trading and frightened. You know, that's not what we mean by discretion. Those are just emotional uh, decisions. By discretion, we mean an insight, a certain uh, feel you had from market behavior by studying it, by researching it, and saying, you know what? I've seen this picture before. This reminds me of what happened a few months ago. Because of that. I am going to trade more conservatively because we've got more volatility and that's my insight. You see that's totally different from waking up and saying, hey, so and so says this stock's going to go great uh, up tremendously so I'm going to jump on board. That's my discretion too or I'm going to bet the farm. That's just emotional trading and, and it doesn't work. So discretion is an insight which comes through experience, which comes through my mentoring as your mentor teaching you what to look for and what to uh, try and study and research. And that's what we encourage. We encourage everyone to do this. So. As we stated uh, while sharing these rules, you have a certain amount of discretion as to where you want to exit. You can exit at the 200% altogether, which is usually what I do, but I don't want anyone copying me. Trade your own stock. We have other people that exit everything at 300. We have people that exit partial positions. We have people that raise their stop to these different levels and then they let the market take them out. That's the insight we encourage. That's the discretion we're talking about. Have you become a part of the process? Our whole goal at specialist trading is to have you become a part of the process. We want to feed you this information, but we don't want to force feed you how to trade it. We want you then to decide once you've digested this information, okay, I've learned it, now how am I going to apply it that best suits my needs? Once again, I know I sound like a broken record, but in my nearly 40 years of trading, this is the only way 
I really truly believe how one becomes consistent. This is what sustained my trading and trust me, I traded like everybody else. I wanted uh, someone to tell me what to buy that day or what to sell. I didn't want to be a part of the process. I basically was saying, I'm taking myself out of the game. You tell me what to do. And that's what most traders do and that's why most traders upwards of 80% fail because they take themselves out of the game. We want to put you back in the game by giving you this information but ultimately we don't just force feed you signals and strategies. We work with you and have you decide how you want to trade it. Okay? I hope that answers the question. No, I think you've done a tremendous job there and there's an awful, awful, awful lot of wisdom you know, uh, behind your statements there and experience, Stephen. We certainly appreciate that. There were several questions that came up with it, talking a little bit about your services. Uh, we're just wondering, do you offer any kind of like a live trading room or anything like that at uh, Specialist Trading? No, we don't offer trading rooms because once again, it's been my experience that trading rooms turn into a crutch. And what most people do is they'll take a trading room and they'll start to listen and then they'll start to wait and hear what the other person thinks is going to happen that day in the market or what they have. And then it gets away entirely from once again you becoming a part of the process. So we, we kind of buck away from those things because we don't want them to turn into a crutch where you're once again taking your cue from someone or something else. Uh, the best way is simply to, to, to mentor with me through our courses and then uh, uh, we figure out something that works best for you and then having you research and study on your own, continue to correspond with me and then your, most of our, our, our students, uh, you know, after uh, a specific time frame which is different for everyone, then they get it and they go on their own and there's no reason to continue paying subscription fees or, or having to be with us because they've, they've got it now. They're, they're now on to being consistent in their trading. Sure. And then I think just kind of wrapping things up here, there was a question coming back to your special, Steve, uh, with, uh, you know, on the um, <clears throat> Secrets of a Stock Exchange Specialist video course. Um, and the question was, how many strategies are included uh, on, in that course? Okay, there are, first of all, we offer uh, a ton more of different techniques, uh, different ways in which to, to view the market, indicators to use, which indicators not to use. Uh, the number one chart pattern you should be looking for regardless of whatever strategy you trade or whatever technique you like to trade. But then we give you one of our best strategies which is strategy number one. So we only offer one complete strategy but it, trust me that, that strategy costs hundreds of dollars. We're giving you all of this plus my personal correspondence, lifetime correspondence just for $37. So it comes with three hours jam-packed of information. Once again it was a videotaped conference that I spoke at in Denver, Colorado years ago. And uh, it comes with a full-fledged strategy, one of our best pullback strategies, as well as uh, uh, two more hours of different techniques, different things to look for and apply to your own trading arsenal. Fantastic. And re remember that, that $37 deal, I think, I think probably more people spent more than that just trading uh, yesterday, <laughs> but that's only $37 <laughs> and it'll go back up to close to 1000 That's how much it's worth, that pro-trader strategies. I know, that's terrific. Well, listen, Stephen, I want to thank you so much for a terrific presentation today, you know, on how you use these Bollinger Bands to trade the markets. And I really appreciate the time that you took to share with us your easy five-step rules for following your 3A strategy. And of course, the discipline required to achieving consistency with this approach. So folks, if any of you came here just a little bit late to the presentation and maybe found it a little bit difficult to follow what Steve was doing, it all comes down to a very straightforward five-step process. And we're going to send you a recording of this presentation so you'll be able to study and see that. And, you know, in, in, more importantly, you know, you're going to, this is something that you can start testing right away, you know, on Monday with the markets and the key is testing as Steve has said do not risk any capital on any strategy that you don't fully understand and embrace as your own but what Steve has provided today is some fantastic easy steps to identify some setups in the markets using Bollinger Bands. I really like how clean Steve's charts are using this strategy and once again he demonstrated and showed how it can use, be used in any market and in virtually any time frame. 
I also want to thank Steve for that terrific offer that he's extended uh, for the Secrets of a Stock Exchange Specialist, and that's only $37 for that, folks. And I think, once again, that's a tremendous value uh, for what's being provided there. Once again, what Steve is doing is he's taking nearly 40 years' worth of experience, and he's sharing those ideas and insights as well as tip techniques and strategies that you can start using right away. So once again, Steve, we all thank you very much for the time that you took to prepare and to give your presentation today. I do want to remind everyone that all this presentation has been recorded and we're going to mail you a link to this recording uh, no later than tomorrow afternoon. So on behalf of the Trading Pub team and Steve Primo, we want to wish you a pleasant rest of your day and happy trading. Take care, be safe, and we look forward to seeing you at our next event.